Adam Carolla, everybody. Jesus Christ. Uh, in New York, I'm sorry. I'm, I apologize. Let All me right. apologize first for the entire city. It yeah. is one of the worst cities since maybe L.A. So yeah, I'm coming that from you L.A., probably so know. it's a tie. Yeah. Well, you're welcome for the advice, sir. Uh, I gave the guy advice what you do on first class, especially if you're uh, flying. Another 20 bucks, 40 bucks. When you walk up, right when the plane reaches that point where you know you're safe to get up and take a piss, you go up and you're right there. The, uh, the stewardesses aren't out in the plane yet. You just hand them a couple of 20s. You go, here, thank you. I just, you know, if you could get me a mimosa or something before. And then you go to the bed. By the time you get back, the fucking drink's right there. Really? Yeah. I don't even shit you. I, and they are surprised. They go, oh, I can't. I can't take that. You, you take it. Well, this is so weird because I flew out here on United and they had like contactless payment. So they kept explaining we're doing contactless payment, which is I think COVID has launched us into some weird realm right, where yeah. not not touching. I like lack of service. Is I like what it's lack of us. eye contact actually <laughs> to help, but physical. I'm all about it. Right, but, right. And it was so it was contactless payment. So flying over here from uh, Springfield, Missouri, and uh, had to fly into Chicago and then Chicago to here. I'm on the plane, so I order a vodka soda, and they say contactless payment. And I said, I've got cash and I've got a credit card. And they yeah. said, neither one will do. You have to touch it. You have to <laughs> sign up for their app or whatever. You have to go. It's a uh, ruse to get you to sign up for their shit is yeah. basically what and it is. And they have you and they, and they have you and they can email and you and, and all that. Yeah, but yeah. literally we went from back in the day you'd fly and it'd be only cash. Yeah. Then it was cash and credit card. Then it was only credit card. And yeah. now it's, and I believe it, it would be, I assume it's illegal that in the United States, you cannot accept either cash or credit card as a form of payment in the air. In the air, like over a certain altitude. It, right. <laughs> it has to be over the highest mountain. In I don't know if there's international air. There's international water. Yeah, yeah. And then there's air space. But yeah. either way, cash and or credit card do, does not have you covered if you want to buy a drink right. on an airplane. Well, that's why I, uh, you know, look, Adam, you probably fly first class too, right? Some yeah, When I can. When you can. If it's a short flight somewhere, like I've been flying down to South Carolina because uh, I'm buying, I have a house built uh, down there. I'm out of this fucking state. Yes, it's a disaster. And, and I'm like, okay. Uh, I don't have to fly first class down to uh, Greenville. So, uh, but if I'm flying cross country, or anything, it's gonna, I have to. Sorry, kids. Uh, but if you tip those girls, I swear to you, they bring you anything. During the mask days, I was able to take my mask off, put it down. No one gave me shit. She kept bringing drinks. And I was like, as long as I have a drink in my... I was literally going to the bathroom like, is this the... Uh, is this How common is this? Because I've never witnessed it. I've flown commercially 7,000 times. I've never seen a bad exchange where the baton dropped on the ground, the 20s. Right, right. You know, and, I, and I went, oh, my God, she's a prostitute. Like, I've never... I've, I've seen a past... Pass them a million times. Never yeah. seen anyone. You may. Are you the only one who does this? I, from the people I've spoken to and given this advice to, and this guy just called and said, "Holy shit, it worked like a charm." Uh, my girl just went to uh, Orlando and did the same thing. I go, "It's what you." Because they used to, especially in first class, they used to give you a gate drink. First right, class, they'd right. come up and give you a drink, and you'd be able to chuckle and drink as the no, I, I, oh, is walking. Yes, the, you yeah. are you are singing to the <laughs> choir because I I would say to this to everyone. So first class used to mean you'd get in and you'd get settled. Yeah. Well, first things first. If you don't turn left, it's not really first class. <laughs> there 
it is. You need that left you turn. You need to door. turn left. You need to turn left. If yes. you turn right, then you just sit there getting the stink eye and your knee banged by Samsonite while everyone is farting up your section. <laughs> that little wisp of gauze doesn't mean anything to the guy once exactly. to take a dump in your show. So first <laughs> thing first, real first class left. Got to turn left. And yes. you'll never see one of those unwashed masses no, coming anywhere near your, your zone. Zone. Yes. Nothing. You're right. Right. So real first class is left. Yeah. Number one. Yeah, yeah. Number two, you used to pull up and they would serve you the drink while you're waiting for the, the other people to load up onto the plane. Yes, they should. So which now makes sense. Now, I'm, I'm just sorting this out. Uh, but if they let you on the plane first and you get a drink, then you have a reason to get on the plane first. If they put you on the plane first with no drink, which they do now, yeah. then you you have just been on the plane the longest. Yeah, and you know, is that a good thing? And what if no. I did that with a bus? <laughs> what if I said, we're taking a bus to Nantucket, and right. you paid eight times more for your ticket, but good news, you get to go on the bus first and wait for everyone else to get on the bus before we leave. You would say, do I get a drink? And they'd go, no, you get nothing. And then you'd yeah. go, well, call me when everyone else yeah, when loaded. everyone's on. And then I'll get on the bus. So oh, come on. it used to be yeah. you got on the plane first for a reason. You got a nice cocktail. You're there to peruse the magazine. And wait, now, think about it this way as a bar. This, imagine instead of an airplane, it's a bar. You have a first, oh, you have the first class ticket to that bar. You get to pull up a bar stool and sit there first, right? Yeah. You will sit there. 25 minutes to a half hour, then you'll push off, then you'll line up, you'll queue up. God forbid you're 37th in line, but maybe you're seventh. You know what I mean? At some point you'll take off. It takes a while. You get to cruising altitude. Sometimes there's even a little turbulence, oh, yeah, you yeah. know, where they go, we're going to keep the seatbelt on. An hour and 28 minutes after you sat down at that bar, you get a drink. So imagine going into a <laughs> bar just so you're now you're at a bar. You just right. imagine going to a bar and going, oh, I'm here. Hold on. That is a great hour observation. Seven minutes. You're not going to want to sit drink. there. And by the way, you paid more than anyone else in this bar yeah. to sit at this. I want to walk in, sit at the bar, and get a drink immediately. And yes. if you're last, you'll probably get that. They also switch to you want the orange juice or the champagne at some yeah, point, yeah, yeah. which is fine. I, I appreciated what they're doing. I got busted once in first class, which is the, I, the orange juice and the champagne was going on behind me for a while. And I was sitting front and center back when they had the big cart. Oh yeah. Big yeah. Serving cart yep. with the booze and the champagne and the OJ would oh, be on top amazing. of it. Amazing. Push that at thing. At a certain the point, I just helped myself and I got busted. But I was like, I'm just doing your job. Good I'm just thing. sitting up front yeah. here. Not like I'm trying to fly this yeah, thing. We're on the ground. I know how to pour a drink. I've been trained in that. Yes. <laughs> now, the fact that I just did it straight to my mouth, I understand <laughs> yeah. why that upset some of the other passengers. You see, I ever see some of those old pictures of the, the carving station. They would. Oh, my God. I yeah. would literally, the chef hat on. Yes. And he's carving with this, you know, or obviously. He's got the prosciutto, uh, the cured ham yeah, hanging. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's cutting with a, a TSA unapproved knife. And right. Every, it didn't matter. And it's all people in suits and ties and, and, and gowns. And they're sitting there because it was a wonderful experience and back then. And they're drinking. Yes. I mean, they're having highballs. Like there's a guy with a martini shaker. Yeah. Now you get the little <laughs> plastic bottle of Kamchatka, you know, and a little can of Schweppes. And it's like, we don't have lemon. No. We, have, we have we have lime powder. We got lime, like too. Lime powder. lime powder. That's what I got on United. I got lime powder. <laughs> the powder. Snort it before you. Uh, yeah, I did a they, freeze. The old days uh, when they had like the 747s, they'd have a bar before the spiral staircase. And it was this grandiose thing that people used to do. And now people are in their pajamas, wearing a shower cap, literally fighting at 30,000 feet. I swear, I think Orville and Wilbur would have just said, let's just build bicycle. I, I, I can't. Yes, yeah, stay to the bike. I, I got to <laughs> say, I, honestly, I've said this. You're right. 
we got into COVID. COVID got everyone used to working at home. Yeah. They started used they got used to working in flip flops and, and pajama bottoms and a bathrobe and nope. stuff. And then at some point society reopened and they all spilled back out into yeah. LAX, but they never changed. And you see people in LAX wearing <laughs> slippers and cut off sweats. It's crazy. I w always say, like I've been to the Delta Lounge at LAX or the terminal at LAX at like 7 a.m. on a Friday. It looks like if you've ever had this happen, you're staying at a you're staying at a Holiday Inn and somebody pulls the fire alarm at 4 a.m. <laughs> yeah. and everyone just files out into the lobby and there's a guy. What does that look like? like right, a guy right. with a boner going, where am I? <laughs> Toweled. What, a, what's, a Holiday Inn robe. <laughs> yeah, like chick with no bra and a t-shirt. Yeah, yeah. yeah, going, yeah. What, where, what's going on? That's what the airport looks like now. What happened? Like, I, look, I, happened I, I, love, I, I love uh, your show books, movies, you are, uh, you're a young guy, but you're an old school guy. I think you appreciate what this country was at some point. And um, although I think we all toil with how to get back to that, maybe uh, that can happen. But when you look at society, the yeah. way we do, and we used to uh, be in public and treat uh, our, our fellow man out in public, uh, your appearance, all this stuff just seems to have gone out the window. And is there anything to do about it? Well, I think the problem is the progressive movement. It's like progress movement. So I got the word progress and movement. Both it's like, of them. like I keep yeah. going, like we keep going. And so you say like, can we get back to, and they're like, what, slavery? Mm. And you're like, no, I, God, I, I want to I get back yes. to the good stuff. MAGA, you mean like chips on, the, you know, no. <laughs> no, there are things we don't want to get back to. Malaria, scurvy, right. there are things we had commonplace. We yeah. don't know horse-drawn carriages. We're not there. We'll go back and we'll pick and choose. Yeah. We'll make a gin rummy hand out of it. Right, right. First class air travel, we'll go back to. Uh, segregation, no. Right. You, you know what I mean? We can pick and choose. Everyone's uh, merits will be how they advance themselves in, in their, uh, their workplace or society it, it just all that went out the window and uh there's no i think there's no shame anymore right it doesn't seem to shame. be uh, like like years oh. ago i think people might have even some sociopaths probably wanted to do something terrible and they're like i can't i can't look like an asshole i can't yeah. look that bad no they you, the, what what end, what happened i was there for this like uh, you know it was about 20 years ago somebody said you can't judge, you know, don't judge. You can't judge. Uh -huh. And I'm like, that's all I do. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's my, my job. That's my waking life is judging. That's right, all I do. Right. Like, well, you can't judge. It's like, you want to know what society looks like that doesn't judge? Go down to LAX <laughs> yeah. to the Delta terminal and see all the fat chicks and slippers <laughs> and, and pajama bottoms. That's, that's what right. non-judging gets you. <laughs> it's crazy that we there's no solution the second anyone comes up with any viable not even a solution just an idea hey maybe we should do this there's bam your scarlet letter yeah. r racist m misogynist some type of ist or phobe x or z for xenophobe i don't <laughs> yeah, know yeah. there's no real um solution because everyone's petrified you've done this with what you you, you built and it's amazing um if you're on the brink of being canceled, and I was well over the brink of being canceled, and you decide, okay, I guess what I have to do is do it myself. Just make something and say what I want and do what I want. Um, you're pretty early in on that whole thing. Uh, you know, you've worked for a lot of companies. You worked for very successful radio companies and whatnot. And, and the change that's happened over the course of the years, you saw it coming. And you went like, hey, I think I need to do my own thing. Yeah, I mean, for me, I was always kind of, you're not going to make it in this business with headshots or who you know, or that, <laughs> that, that kid's got it. You know, that wasn't going to be discovered. Yeah, yeah. 
at, I was going to be discovered at a coffee shop. He know. was a soda jerk at right. uh, a malt right. shop in Hollywood. Right. And then Swifty <laughs> Lazar yeah, came yeah. in and said, that boy's got He's it. not sure at the movie theater. Right. <laughs> so I, I knew none of that was going to work for me. I, I, you know, my parents didn't like me. I, I didn't feel like society would like me. I, I had this feeling like I needed to deliver a product. Right. And show up and show up every day and you're only as good as your last day and, and create some kind of product, you know, and I was essentially right. I mean, we started the man show and crank yankers and love line existed, but I sort of put myself into it. It's like, I'm going to put my own stink on this show. Yeah. And I, so everything I've done has been pretty self generated. And when radio ended 13 and a half years ago or whenever it was for me, I'm just like, you're going to have to create your own world. And, and also with a undertone of, I don't want to hear the corporate this, and I don't want to have a, 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 a corporate, you know, platform to de platform me. And I don't want to talk to any more program directors. Is and I just want to worse like you being what they called, you know, talent on, on that. And there was talent management and sales and any time you had to meet with these fucking people, it was uh, abominable to well, sit there and listen to this uh, slide rule mentality of what you should be doing. And you knew what you should be doing. You knew what your fans liked. You just knew yeah. what to deliver. And then there was were, were people that told you uh, the exact opposite and, and that you shouldn't be doing this or that. And for somebody that is talented, it's frustrating. Well, you know, for me, I didn't so much have like, here's what my audience wants. I was just like, here's what I do. Yeah. And if people don't like it, then I'll go back to swinging a hammer. But I, I, all I can do is what I do. Yeah. And I like I knew I was good at being funny. So I was like, I'm going to go with, you know. And so when people go, you talked about you know, you, you did love line. The first call you took was 25 minutes long. Well, you got to roll calls. And I was like, I was interested for that. Yeah. Amount of yeah. Time. So that's all you have is your kind of yardstick that you measure things by yeah, what you do, what you know how to do. Like, you know, and I, I don't so much mean what your, your audience gives you back, what you're catering to. You'll do what you do. And if there's an audience for it, you're going to do well. That's pretty yeah, much. Yeah, when you do enough live performing, you, yeah. you get it back in real time, whether you're yeah, doing yeah. what they want or not doing what they want. But, you know, in terms of radio and, you know, program directors and, and all that kind of stuff, I, I realized I, 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 did, I realized I was telling somebody once. I was like, I've had this program director and I had that program director and this guy was a pain in the ass and this guy wanted, he didn't, he didn't get it. He wasn't yeah. funny. He wanted me to do X, Y, and Z. You know, he wanted me to do the Heine wine bit. I didn't want to do it, you know, or whatever sure, it was. It's at 9 a.m. every morning. And then at some point I was talking about this other program director and I, and I was like, this guy's excellent. He never said a word. He was wonderful guy. He never, no notes. He was brilliant. He never spoke. He was awesome. He never came to me with anything. And I was like, that's the yardstick for a great program director. <laughs> yeah. Ignores you. Ignoring like, you. Like, what are, do, do other consultants work that way? Like, Isn't oh, my that IT the guy's truth? excellent. He never shows up. Like yeah. the best a program director can get is not talking to you. Yeah. Now, obviously, the best they could get is if you want, this guy was smart, he was sharp, he was funny, he got me. Telling me things I didn't realize. He did yeah, the whole yeah. rich man, poor man, that was his bit. He had that, <laughs> it was his idea. You know, like, but, but it could never even get to that level no. it could get from horrible sense of humor doesn't get me <laughs> wanted me off the station wanted heidi frosty and frank to replace me or right. bonaduce or whoever to just zero which would be didn't yeah. talk to me but it was never he had great ideas yeah, the best thing they could do is leave you alone and ignore you that is an odd job i've always thought the consultant was an odd job and i thought it was insulting to have uh air checks oh, remember my God. doing the There's air no, check you'd have yeah. to record your show on a cassette and then your pd 
would sit with you as you played it and stop oh, it. Oh, wait a minute. He would there. record it. They would record they it. They would record it. You right, didn't right. get to pick the best no, of. No, no, no. He would just play a, a random He'd grab a Daily random air check. He would grab the worst Out of hour. context and just go click. See, now what you did there, and it's like, yeah, I, it doesn't matter what I did there. There right. was another 80 things I did. Yes. Uh, 40 of them worked. It, it's like, what are you, like, what are you trying to tell me that I should or shouldn't do because this is all I can do. They pick these little moments out. It was one of the most uh, degrading things I think for a, a, a job. The air check, yeah, is like w watching you swing a golf club or fuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, See what you did here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's terrible. It's a disaster. But it's it's an hour. It's an hour long of yeah. what? And they they. I wish you could pick your air check. Yeah, let me pick my fucking air check. You'd love it. Right, but wow, this is brilliant. No, they they pick it, uh, but it'd be like a criminal saying, "Let me pick my own surveillance film." Yeah, yeah, this is yeah, me yeah. paying the guy at the Seven Eleven from the day before. How come yeah. we don't focus on that? It's only the one where I pistol that my part out where I hit him over the head. And right. <laughs> you, uh, you've gone. I think people probably would call you conservative. Yeah, they is would. That, yeah. You know, I, I mean. Uh, and, and being in the entertainment industry, it's one of the toughest uh, places to be these days. Uh, and, and you came out of an industry where you were teamed up and worked with a lot of people that are considered bleeding heart liberals. Uh, has that affected your friendships or any other thing that you, you feel? Uh, have you ever held back because you thought, ah, this person or this industry might not like what I'm saying? Uh, no, I, I, you know, I have many liberal friends who I work with in Hollywood. Jimmy's very liberal. We've yeah. always been friends. We've never. Everyone loves the Adam Carolla, Jimmy Kimmel thing because it's like, holy shit, these are polar opposites. If you listen to their, you know, not their, their comedy or anything, but their opinions and whatnot. Yeah, but we've always been friends. Yeah. Politics has never been a part of our friendship. It, it wasn't at the beginning. It wasn't in the middle. It was a very know. big thing years ago. Now it's become it just like wasn't mandatory. a thing. I, I don't know why everyone has to sort of declare major. Mm -hmm. Uh, and if you don't declare, they'll declare one for you, you know, yeah, yeah. The, the new world order. But You've probably been called a bleeding heart liberal for something you said. I've had that happen. We go, oh, this liberal Anthony. I'm like, are you out of your fucking mind to yeah. understand <laughs> like I'm not a liberal? But yeah, you say one thing. And that kind of sometimes if you, you end up in the middle and you talk about a, a, a subject where you're not going right or left, people will go whatever they don't want you to be. Yeah. Oh, he's obviously a liberal now. It's like, well, how did that happen? Yeah, the, the criteria for being... A conservative is you could go, I'm for gay marriage and I'm for legalization of drugs and I'm for, you know, consensual, you know, crimes of consent. I don't want people locked up. And you could go, yeah, I want the rich corporations to stay and pay their taxes. Uh, but I'd like I'd like a robust border. And they'd go like, right. oh, okay, so you're Ted there Nugent now. He's, and it's like he's a racist. He's right. This, he's that, right. So how does this work? So you yeah, have yeah. a list of 10 topics. If I disagree on the death tax. <laughs> right, right. But had, did agree on all the other things on yeah. there, then I'm a oh, conservative. That's a pretty high bar. It is. Not being a conservative. You need to, uh, you need to be totally on board, 100%, with every agenda, either left or right. Yeah, you go, so they go, yeah. they go, uh, gay marriage. You go, I'm all for it. Yeah. Um, uh, legalization of marijuana, I'm all for it. Uh, guy of the big dick swinging, swimming against <laughs> girls in a swimming pool at, at the college level. It's like, oh, I'm not, yeah, I'm not I'm for not, that. I don't think I'm there. I'm not for that. Oh, <laughs> oh, well, this is interesting, isn't it? And it's like, no, that's called an opinion. <laughs> I agreed with you on the first two. I didn't agree on the second two. Yeah, yeah. One, I think history will be kind to my decision in a few short years. Do yeah, not yeah. worry. And uh, no, but I got the first two. Like, <laughs> no, not enough. By the way, it's all they do is push 
until they can just get you to break. They're not really, they're not looking for equality or equity no, no, or equality, anything. They I, just want to keep going. I've said it before. Equality sucks. Off. It's uh, it, it, You can be goofed on. Jokes can be made of you. You have to work for a living. You have to, right. That's equality. Uh, people love the the. The struggle to equality. Right. Oh, I need to struggle now. I, you know, you you got to give me this and do this for me, and and and, and until I get this equality, uh, because once you get it, then you could be treated like everybody, and no one wants to be treated like everybody. It's a terrible place to be. Yeah. Uh, it's it's a, a struggling, a, a horrible place to be. But um, I've seen you on Tucker a, a few times. You do a great job on there. And uh, I heard you talking about the the transgender sports uh, thing. Uh, we're seeing a lot more states come on board and say, "Hey, this is not good. This is fucked up. This is uh, uh, not fair." Uh, imagine being, you know, that you're 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 the father. You're the father of a daughter, mm-hmm. uh, and and y- 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 she tries. She can. Uh, obviously get a scholarship if she tries hard enough and is talented and then some dude comes in and blows her away out of the water whether it's swimming or, or track or whatever scholarship she would have gotten to to get into college H- how would that make anyone feel why should you smile and go it's you know it's what it is well everyone's just scared to death so petrified well that's petrified. that's just that's it part of how they work they scare, yeah, everybody they scare you into submission and yes. into saying and believing insane things yeah and it's sad it happened in COVID. It's sad that so many Americans just are so malleable, but really oh. weak and soft, and they just went along with it. So there's a very small vocal group. They kind of run Hollywood and the media. They scare all the people. Everyone's yeah. everyone's greatest fears to be called. Really, you, you know what it is? It's funny. It's a vestige from our childhood. No one wants to be called uptight. Yeah, right. hey, you're uptight. What? No, no. My I'm, dad's uptight. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. So everyone is scared of, you know, misogynistic, homophobe, whatever, not being part of it. No one wants to get called anything. Right. So everyone just zips it. And we basically let three maniacs run the entire thing. I mean, three. back back to the airplane. Like, back to the airplane. Sure. All right. So it's like, <laughs> let's just say there's... 200 of us on the airplane, but there's three super loud people right. in the front. And they went, look, uh, who wants to go to Maui or we can go to Beirut, you know? And, and we're like, oh, I want to go to Maui. I want to go to Maui. Maui? Yeah, yeah. And then you go, but anyone who says Maui's a racist, <laughs> and then you're like, I wanted to go to Maui. I did too. I guess I, we're going. I, we got to go to Beirut. Well, raise your hand and tell them. I'm not raising my <laughs> hand. You know what they're going to do to me? There's oh a black my guy God. on this plane. I'm not right. doing that. Well, what if we raised all our hands together? That would work, but we're never going to figure it out. So No, it's that fear. Beirut, Beirut, here we come. How did that happen? We used to actually be able to say things, um, and and even if someone called you a name or anything, it wasn't all that bad. Now it just seems like if if someone wants to call you a racist, uh, and I do think that's calming down a bit. I've seen like like what, because if you just pound people with it long enough, they'll be like, it really doesn't have a meaning anymore. Right. Say a word a thousand times, it just it's gibberish right. at that right. point. Uh, so. I, but I think there's still enough really scared people to do something. Um, we're, we're seeing a, a point in this country where I do think that there is an anti-white sentiment. Whether it's, and I'm not talking, again, we could sit here and go, oh, does that mean white power? Does that mean you're right. a Nazi? No, it just means that that I don't think white people are listened to uh, to the extent that maybe uh, they should be, or just like anybody should be listened to. Well, uh, the, the problem we made or the the road we went down is a sort of like, you know, I'm a black female mayor, so I'll be able to run this city from that perspective right. because how could you understand what I'm going through because if you're male or you're white or you're whatever? It's a very racist thought. It is. The mayor or the fire chief just has to do the best job they can, whatever they are. This notion, you know, we started getting into this like the fire department needs to represent the community. Why do they Why? need to represent the that? community? I've, I've seen LAX security. They don't represent my community. <laughs> I 
want some I, I, brawny I just, Irish guy dragging me out of a smoke-filled yes, building. Yes, I, uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't care the color of the cop that pulls me over. I, I'm getting a ticket or I'm not getting right. a ticket. It's a super racist thought. Yeah. The notion that white firemen wouldn't help the black community as much as they could help the white or one of their own or someone that looks like them yeah, or ridiculous. something. It's all insane. Everyone's signed off on it. The most insulting one is scared of people who look different than you. Oh, I know. Can you yeah. imagine living in New York, being scared to be like a <laughs> you're firecracker going petrified. on? <laughs> yeah, you're a, you're a Yorkie on Fourth of July. It'd be you're like that's losing your yeah, mind. It'd be like a scene from Boogie Nights where he's at the drug dealer's house yeah. and the guy's lighting the M80s behind him. You couldn't walk two blocks if you were scared of people who look different than you. Isn't that amazing that they do use language uh, so well? It's very Orwell. And it's very uh, Soviet era where you look at something like phobe, like just calling someone a homophobe. Mm -hmm. It's like you're scared. Phobia right. is a fear. Right. So it's like, no, it, it's not a fear. I might have opinions about uh, uh, something or a people or a lifestyle. It's my opinion, which I have every right to have. Why is that? Why do you have to make me scared of it? Because it makes you unintelligent, unwilling yes. to. Well, because think about that someone's and tolerate yeah. it. Well, in the Orwellian, you know, sort of old Soviet uh, approach, it's like you have a phobia. That's an unreasonable fear of something. Right. So, you know, having a phobia of rattlesnakes isn't really a phobia, <laughs> but having a phobia of butterflies is a phobia that can't hurt you. So it's like, it's an irrational fear. Yeah. So what it is, is then I need to come in and coach you up. That's where they come in uh -huh. because they are evolved and they understand it. So you have this phobia of gay people or black people or whatever it is, it's a, a phobic. And then I'm going to come in because I'm involved and help right. you with your irrational fear. The reality is, is you don't have an irrational fear of any of these people. Opinion. I just have an opinion. Have an opinion. Right. But to make it a fear makes it seem so much more important. And, and it's your problem. It's, it's also a weird. It's also like a weird thing, too, because when they go like, homophobic the homophobic guys are the guys who are gay bashing yeah, like if, yeah. if i'm scared if i'm arachnophobic i don't i don't like spiders i just run the other direction yeah, yeah. i don't come looking for them with a flip-flop no you I'm wouldn't gone. You just i yeah, don't so want you, to you get right. up on the coffee table and let somebody else deal with it you know this no they, yes you you have a fear of gay people so you beat them or something it doesn't mean no you would run away no one would know you have a fear really because you'd never get near anybody because you're right. afraid of them right fear of fire you don't go to a the fireplace uh adam thanks so much man I'm, they're telling me you have to go it's oh i do have a me. busy day you are a busy guy if you're in new york i'm sure you have things to do that's true have you enjoyed some of the sights on the streets and a lot uh, of humanity out there oh boy is there ever. <laughs> it's our mayor though uh, eric adams he He's uh, working hard. I think he's sewing a new um, jacket Bracelet? for a new oh, okay. celebrity too uh, many bracelets outing. Something out. like the Met Gala or uh, the uh, Academy Award. He's going to be somewhere celebrating uh, while people are literally dying on the streets and smoking crack. It's an amazing city. This is like a time machine, New York, now. It You're is. Going back to the 70s. It should yeah. be the Warriors. There's a, I saw some... I saw Kurt Russell with a patch over his eye. <laughs> patch over his eye. It's amazing. We've, we've entered a time machine uh, out there. Adam, thanks so much, man. Of course, uh, Adam Carolla on both uh, Twitter and Instagram. AdamCarolla.com for all your Adam Carolla needs online. Uh, Three-time New York Times bestselling author... Yeah. Son of a Soon to be fourth if you guys I know. Get a copy of his new book, Everything Reminds Me of Something, Advice, Answers, But No Apologies. What's that uh, What's that about? It's just another one of my books where I, you know, if you, th if you think I buck the system when I'm talking into a microphone, wait till I've had a few drinks and I'm dictating a book to somebody, I, it really comes yeah. out. Yeah. So your, <laughs> your audience will enjoy it. And uh, available now, of course, at adamcarolla.com, and I'm sure anywhere you get your finer books. Yeah. Uh, the Adam Carolla Show, available anywhere you get your podcasts and available for free at adamcarolla.com. Adam, thanks so much, man. Thanks, Adam. Awesome uh, to see you.